Hi guys and welcome to another episode. My name is Steve White and I created and designed the Steve White podcast just to give you a place of empowerment, inspiration, wellness and positivity. I hope that you find some healing and strength while I help you to see the beauty in the grey area. As a creative, I have made many adjustments to my personal lifestyle over the years. Whether it be my diet, my screen time, routines, creating a natural and well-ordered workspace, or just my process of filtering out the information that I absorb, I've seen the benefits of living life in a holistic way, and I'm striving to become better each day. On today's episode, I'm humbled to be joined by someone who embodies the word holistic. A long-time friend of mine, an artist, explorer, educator, husband, father, and one of the most intelligent people that I know, MD Spooner. Welcome and thank you for being a part of this show. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, bro. I so appreciate that intro. It is a blessing. It is an honor to be sharing space with you. And I can't wait for us to discuss and share, man. It's apparent that wellness, well-being and the term holistic is starting to pick up some kind of momentum in the world um, as a way of life for many people. However, there are still many that don't know what it means or know the benefits. Um, As someone who has a deepened experience within this approach, how would you define the word holistic? Holistic. I think that ultimately speaking, it is about harmonizing various aspects of one's life. It is about harmonizing various aspects of my life. And these aspects of my life can be inherently harmonious with each other, or they can be inherently disharmonious or seemingly disharmonious with each other. And I think that As someone who is approaching life in a holistic fashion, I think that living holistically is about bringing all of those various aspects and parts and harmonizing whether they are inherently connected or not and making them one in myself and making them one in my life. And so that's what holistic means to me. Ultimately, Um, you know, it could be, you know, even to give an example, we can look at so-called diet as a way in which to become healthy, et cetera, et cetera. However, if you don't have various other aspects that are, are integrated into your life to complement your, your, your diet, et cetera, then that diet may not actually make the difference between you actually becoming, you know, actually achieving what you're actually setting out to do and not achieving it because holistic living is when you bring everything together and you you make it all work in synergy so that's basically my answer in uh uh, in an expansive nutshell (laughs) (laughs) i love that i love that so generally speaking you're you're saying that it's about a collaboration of various aspects of one's life that come together to create um in a sense a foundation of, that you can build upon a solid foundation because every aspect is contributing yeah. to a more stable foundation yeah for sure for sure and i think of it even in horticultural terms or permacultural terms i think of it as an ecosystem you know an ecosystem in order to flourish, in order to be abundant, has to be diverse. And so in order for the ecosystem to really flourish, it it can't just have one species. It can't just have one animal. It can't just have one plant. It has to have various plant species. It has to have various wildlife. It has to have various microbial life in order for it to to harmonize and begin to flourish and thrive. And we, in that context, are ecosystems. And more than in that context, we are actually ecosystems. It's not simply an analogy, it is the case. We are ecosystems. So we require various so-called compartments 
to come together to make the whole, to flourish, to thrive. We are ecosystems. I love that. Mm. I have personally been blessed to see the benefits of you living this way. I've been blessed enough to see it and to see how you've evolved as a person and how it's impacted your your mm-hmm. art and the way you live your life, the way you are with your family um, and your values. Um, what I'd like to know is, what was the turning point for you to start prioritizing your health? And what was your process towards living in a more holistic way? It's been a very organic journey. It's been a very organic transformation of mine. And it's an ongoing transformation. Transformation isn't stan- static or stagnant. Transformation is something that takes place every moment, every day, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you know. I think that I've always been someone who's, I've always been a seeker. I've always been someone, or for as long as I can remember, I've been a seeker. I've been on this quest to discover new things, new things about myself, new things about the world and about life. And there was a distinct moment in time where health became a great priority for me and nutrition. And this was simply during a period of time where I watched this this program called Vegucated, which was about the importance of a plant based diet and the sustainable nature of having a plant based diet over a uh, primarily meat based diet. And that really spoke to the food industry as it was then and as it is now and the the lack of ethics in the food industry and also unsustainability of the farming, etc. And so that really pricked up my ears when I saw that we could actually, as, as a species, could live and flourish on a plant-based diet. And by proxy or as a byproduct of that, we could actually help save the planet. We could, you know... As far as karma is concerned, we wouldn't have to deal with the potential uh, repercussions of slaughtering innocent animals, um, etc. So that was one point. And then another thing during that same period of time was I remember reading a few articles and seeing some videos um, about, you know, how unethical the food, again, the food industry is. And there was this one particular um, one particular video that I saw where this guy went undercover for a newspaper it was one of like the most renowned British newspapers. And he got a job in a meat factory for which was literally processing dead animals. This or it could have no, it was live animals actually. It was like live chickens, etc. And he basically got a job having no prior experience. He got a job within 45 minutes of going to apply. And he this was his undercover experience. He went and then he videoed it all with a hidden camera. And what I saw really, you know, quote unquote, disgusted me. And it was at that point I was like, you know what? I just don't want to eat meat anymore. But I'm saying all that to say that that is really a distinct time where I started taking my health and nutrition seriously. And that really spawned into me looking at holistic approaches to living as a must, must for myself. I think it's very important for our listeners to know that there are many benefits to a lot of different choices that we can make in life. I always tell people that the, the deciding factor for any decision that you make is your reason. Yes. And um, some people would say your why. Mm. Um, I have, as you know, someone who's plant-based myself, I have a lot of people ask me questions about being plant-based or, you know, saying, did I notice any differences Mm -hmm, or whatever it may be. Um, Or they may say, I'm thinking of going plant-based or I'm thinking of giving up meat for a month or so. And I always say to them, it's not that it's difficult to do it. Mm -hmm. It's just that your motivation behind doing it needs to be the thing that keeps you doing it. If you're doing it to lose weight, um, it's hard to stay motivated for something like that because eventually you will lose the weight and then what? Exactly. Or if you're doing it because it seems popular 
Well, the world changes and trends change. Um, if it's not keto diet, it's no carbs. If it's not no carbs, it's <laughs> vegan. If it's not, yeah. you know, things always change. So if you tie your why yeah. to fluctuating stimuli, yeah. then it'll be hard to sustain that as a lifestyle. Yes, What you've just shared right there is, um, I'm sure it's quite a common one for people who make that decision. But it, when you see it yourself... Mm. It is enough for some people to say, actually, yes. um, I'm doing this out of luxury, not out of necessity. For um, sure, bro. <laughs> for um, sure. You know, um, but again, that reason might not be strong enough for somebody else. Definitely. And so, and then for those of you who do eat meat and you make a, you have a choice to eat meat, your reason for eating meat may be strong enough to keep you eating meat. And that's sure. fine too. You yeah. Know, um, I think the important thing with a holistic life is making changes within your life that support the life that you want to live. 100%. You know, that aligns with your values, aligns with um, your core beliefs and really is in the same path and alignment with where you want to go and what your vision is for yourself, your family, your future. And, you know, on on that note, you know, uh, regarding everything that you've just said, you can live holistically and still be a meat eater. You know, there are various schools of thought within the so-called vegan community or plant-based community. And, you know, I sit on the side of the fence that ultimately speaking, my reason, my particular reason for going plant-based, well, there were several reasons actually, but I laid out one of them and it was that the unethical nature of the food industry led me to the point where I was like, I don't want to be consuming meat from these mass produced or I don't want to be consuming mass produced meat um, from purchases that I make in these supermarkets, etc. I could go down the farmer's market route. I could go down the route of rearing my own livestock. But actually, when I'm looking at the statistics, in my opinion, and my opinion is based on the data from these particular programs and these different, what's it, metrics, I'm seeing actually, I don't actually need to eat meat in order to be optimally healthy. And that was what led me to say, well, if I don't need to eat meat to be optimally healthy, um, then I don't need to, don't need to eat it. And that was literally what it was. But there are some schools of thought that say we do need to eat meat in order to be optimally healthy. And I'm actually up for those conversations. And I'm sure from that point of having that switch in your lifestyle, I'm sure it obviously changes your social life. It changes the way you shop. It changes, I guess, habits. But then I'm sure that then flowed into other areas of your life where you started to have information that you wouldn't, maybe it was right in front of you before, but because you weren't focused in that direction, now you maybe start to look into or be more aware of things like, prayer and meditation yeah. and um feeding your mind with positive material for example yeah there's there's a doorway and it, and it's almost like the wardrobe in the lion the witch in the wardrobe in it <laughs> you know you just like there's one doorway and it opens up a brand new world and this world has all these different these new colors and tones and yeah man that i agree with that completely what i noticed at each stage was when i took that step to the next level my filter for information changed although it wasn't initially about the animals for me it was more to do with my health I've seen it in my family I've seen it in loved ones um, having diabetes and obviously things like sickle cell and things like you know high blood pressure and I've seen and experienced within my own life losing close people to me due to heart attacks and um, strokes and things like that and I thought that maybe by me doing this I'm, I won't solve the problem of those illnesses or diseases uh, but maybe it changes a pattern in the generation that comes after me within my family line that shows them that actually these vegetables these plants they are an option. One thing that's really important to me is I I identified very, very early on that my eye for, for information 
opened up. And so that then started to impact how I thought about the situations and um, eventually did the whole animal thing did become real meaningful to me and um, the environment and obviously nature. And I started to open up to, um, I would say, a more holistic way of living. And I, that, I real, really think that started from definitely changing my diet. And I think for many people, it can start there or it may start with just, you know, having me time in the evening um, or just kind of, you know, having no screen time or not watching the news or it can start. The starting point could be different for every single person. But in what ways do you think that a holistic lifestyle impacts and influences art creativity and our attitudes towards success i think ultimately i have started to see and i think that many people who live holistically um when we're looking at success or let let, let me speak for myself when i think of success now more than ever i see there is a spectrum and success is not defined by one particular thing it's not defined by a particular amount of money that you're able to acquire or it's not about achieving a grammy per se it's not about the attempting to get to the pinnacle of a mountain top and then you've arrived that's not how i actually deem it nor see it it's for me success is very much the journey you know it's about exploring inquiring and discovering newness and realizing that actually there is never a limit to your discoveries there is never a limit to my discoveries and so success has very much taken on or can be attributed more than anything to the journey itself and the the desire for discovery and this is something that even now in sharing it in answering the question it's becoming more clear to me what success is and that very much comes from i think a place of contentment contentment with oneself with literally having your point of departure be this i am already perfect i am already complete i am already without lack and it's from that point of departure that you are able to just discover everything that you already are and I think that that's re that really is success. I think that is success because it's from that, it's within that context that the world is always going to look beautiful. You always find the beauty in the gray area, as you say, mm -hmm. you know? So I would say that that definitely living holistically and approaching life in a holistic fashion definitely allows me to live in that space more consistently. And that means I appreciate everything that I am. I appreciate that everything that I have and appreciate everything I, I do far more than if I wasn't looking at things from that perspective. If I was, if I was maybe defining success as getting this new thing or getting that new thing, or when I get to this, then I'll be this, you know? So I would say that as far as art and creativity are concerned, within that context, art then just becomes self-expression it becomes an expression of the whole that you already are creativity becomes an outflow of the wholeness that you already are that i already am yeah and you know i i've seen your work and your expression of your art is definitely a reflection of your lifestyle your lifestyle forces you to live authentically hmm. the moment you start to yeah. be fake or to create under the influence of maybe your former yes. self, there'll be some kind of conflict that says, no, this isn't really right. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And I think there's a place for doing everything possible to refine or finesse a piece of music or a piece of art in order for it to speak to more people. However, if it is at the detriment or compromise of the piece itself, then... I have to, and I think one has to completely cut ties with those attempts, you know? Um, 
there's a particular song that I have at the moment, which will I will definitely be releasing as a single. And it's one which it, it, it embodies a lot of what, if not everything that I am in five odd minutes. And it went through about four or five incarnations before it became what it is now and became the song that I feel like it deserved to be. And the process was very much a refining or finessing process. It was like, okay, I did this version. Then I worked with, um, you know, a friend of mine to enhance and to enhance the production, enhance the sound, and therefore, you know, I guess extract some more gold from it. And then after that, I came together with a bunch of my friends who I work with regularly. I played it to them and they said, okay, yeah, but if you use this portion of the song, this would really connect with more people. It's like, okay, cool. So I took it from that point and then I did this and that. And it got to the point where it is the song it is now, you know, I did the refining and finessing process without compromising what the song was. And I love that process because going back to the, to the point initially, like as long as it doesn't compromise what the song is, then I'm, um, and going back to the point about it being able to connect with more people, that was a great example of the fact that I can actually make a song which is created to connect with as many poss people as possible without compromising it. And so that's the approach that I sometimes take. It's not the, the approach I always take with music. However, it is definitely um, the approach that I think I can take um, if I feel the song or the piece of art needs it. And again, that all comes back down to being an expression of how you live your life, you know, and perhaps your lifestyle has given you the capacity to have this type of clarity where you can be that meticulous within your art. Yeah, for sure. And actually you've, you've just triggered something in my mind and that is regarding to the initial question that you've asked about attitude to success. And if I hadn't created the space for myself, that I'm already whole, I'm already complete, I'm already perfect, and everything I do is as an outflow of that, then I would have felt when I had brought this piece of music to my, my close-knit circle who I collaborate with re regularly, and they had critiqued it, I would have felt inadequate or felt like I had missed the mark in some way because they were critiquing it. And I would have felt like, oh, my work isn't good enough. Mm. However, coming from the place of I'm already perfect, I'm already whole. It meant when I was offering um, it to their ears and they were critiquing it, I was able to actually see, see that this, this ultimately, this process is, is success. Mm. This process is literally success. That is a great example of success mm. because I could have kept it to myself and I could have been happy with it, and yet it would have been what it was. But now it is what it is because I actually opened it up and it became something completely, complete, like a 10x version of itself. Mm. And for me, that's a great example of success when it's like, I'm, I'm already whole and complete. I'm offering this art to you. Let me know your thoughts. Okay, I, I, I really hear what you're saying there. Okay, let me go against the grain here. Um, and and do something different that I wouldn't have done. Um, and so it's it's quite quite ambiguous or quite abstract, but yet I'm seeing the concrete nature of it, um, of this example, just in sharing this now, you know. So I hope that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Mm. To me, it's quite clear to see that we live in a consumer society and Many people are working mm -hmm. long hours without any regard for the impact that this can have on their health or their mental state. But how do we change our habitual yes. programming to stay more aligned with who we are, like you said, as being whole, as opposed to what we do? I really think it starts with connecting with nature. With in addition to that, and, and connecting with nature can be going out and hugging trees. It can be going out and walking on soil or grass barefoot. It can be going out and, you know, lying on the ground, 
you know, with insects literally, <laughs> you know, uh, like covering you. And, and those are all legitimate things. And it can also just be simply breathing, you know, and actually practicing and performing deep breathing exercises, you know, deep breathing exercises, which force you to become conscious, literally aware of the vibrations of your being, the vibrations of your body, conscious of your presence in your, your vessel, you know, in your body. It can be something as simple as that. I think that that would help a great deal because I think, well, first and foremost, on average, we can go 30 days without food. We can go, on average, three days without water. And on average, we can go three minutes without breath. So it would stand to reason that actually connecting with our breath on a regular basis above all else would be the most important thing. And in connecting with our breath, we actually connect with spirit because when you look at linguistics, you see that spirit and breath are synonymous. You know, if you look at the Hebrew word or every word for for spirit, it, it's ruach, and that means breath. If you look at the Greek or the old, the ancient Greek term for, for spirit, it's pneuma, which means breath. So we're seeing a synonym between breath or breathing <laughs> and spirit or connecting with spirit or higher power. And it's in that connection with spirit and the higher power that we actually see ourselves, you know? So I think that that is a, that is a critical thing, actually. I know that there'll be people listening to this thinking, man, when do I have the time to do that? You know, because because our world, it doesn't really support that type of lifestyle. Mm. So it there is an uncomfortable period that you must go through when you're transitioning to being more holistic within your life. There, there must be an uncomfortable period where you realise that actually mm. the world that I live in <laughs> doesn't support this. It's busy, it's polluted, it's fast paced. Um, there's not an extra minute in the day for me to yes. have time for myself. I'm busy with the kids or I work long hours. But also to understand that this burnout culture um, and yeah. us thinking that we have to grind or, you know, hard work equals success kind of mindset. Yes. Those are habits. And so I guess what I'm asking you is, can we form mm. new habits <laughs> that kind of debunk some of those beliefs that we may already have about we don't have enough time or you know um you know for whatever excuse people may give themselves yes. i think time would be the the, the most yes. obvious one can we relearn the truth about ourselves by changing our habits yeah i would definitely say so and i think that ultimately speaking when you do things in small steps consistently, there is a compound effect that takes place. And that compound effect is likely, if not definitively, going to be far more impactful to one's life than one could possibly imagine when they are just doing like small things on a regular basis. So, when, for instance, we're looking at breathing exercises or becoming conscious of your breathing, just to go back to that example, if you were doing that for five minutes a day, every day, there would be a point at which it, it literally becomes you. You assimilate it to the point at which it becomes you. This is, again, going back to that statement, doing something as 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 shortly as five minutes per day for a particular period of time, you're bound, you're bound to just become that or that thing's bound to become you. Just to make it clear, I'm actually speaking from experience here. I became, just at the start of this year, I became very aware of the fact that, wow, actually I'm not conscious of my breathing or my breath. And I actually started practicing this. And it got to the point within a, sh a few short weeks, like we're talking two or three weeks, where I was breathing deeply in through my nose and out through my nose. 
even involuntarily. This came from consciously doing it literally like five intentional minutes per day for a series of maybe two or three weeks. And within that period of time, I was doing it almost at every moment. I was breathing in through my nose and out through my nose for like deep breaths, you know, and I was really expanding my, um, you know, my capacity. And it was during this time of expanding my capacity through breath practice that I realized, realized that I became far more patient. And I'm generally a patient person, but I came, became ex far more patient than I've been in quite some time. And um, that really revealed my identity as patient. I actually, I'm patient by nature. My nature is patience, you know? And so it's very, very possible, even within this far, fast paced society, to transform one's life with simple things or simple acts like that, where you're taking something small and you're doing it so regularly that you literally assimilate it and it becomes you. Mm. I think that's, that's such an important point. Um, you mentioned, you know, taking small steps and. I think another good suggestion is how we define ourselves. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people define themselves by their job titles. Yes. You say, oh, so tell me about yourself. They'll say, oh, I'm a doctor or I'm a teacher or I'm a, yes. even in my case, I'm an author. or I, I introduced you as an artist. Um, but psychologically, think about how it would impact mm. you Yes. On a, a mental level, if you just said, I am whole, I am enough, I am whole, I am perfect. Um, I'm sure that would have a residual impact mm. on yeah. the things that you then choose to do with your life because of that. Yes. That, that affirmation and that belief will, it will inspire confidence that maybe you didn't have before but your brain starts to believe that and hmm. then you start hmm. to without a doubt bro. act as though you are and then you realize oh i am and i always have been without a doubt wonderfully takes me on to my last point um as someone who has taken this journey what advice would you give to someone who knows that they want to make a change within their lives and live more holistically but doesn't know where to start I mean, ultimately, it starts with that desire and your, as you said earlier on, your why or your motivation has to outweigh your reasons, justifications or considerations for not taking action. So I think it would start with formulating your why, actually creating what your why is and your motivation is and blowing it out of all proportion, <laughs> you know, um, really making it so large that and so impactful that you can't help but do or be whatever you need to be in order to become what you're looking to become, you know. And so I think a practical application in this case or practical application in this case could be literally going, flashing forward to you at 80 or 90 years of age and you actually then looking back on your life and saying, did I live my life well? Did I actually do what I wanted to achieve or, or do what I know I could have achieved? And if, if the answer is no, then put yourself into that position where you're really, as a 90-year-old, you're looking back and thinking, oh, my days, I didn't achieve what I know I could have achieved or I didn't actually do the things that I wanted to. I didn't create the relationships I created and feel the feeling, feel the impact of that, actually feel it to the degree that, and, and then actually say, okay, what would it mean for me if that was my outcome? And then you feel what, <laughs> what it would mean for you if that was your outcome. And if, for instance, the, 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 the feeling that you would feel or what it would mean to you is like, oh, my days, I would just feel like I wasted my life or I feel like, you know, um, you know I've, I'm a failure to myself. 
connecting with that, I think that that would be a real start um, to motivate you to say, okay, no, I need to take steps to ensure that when I am flashing forward, I know that I've lived the life well. And so feeling those feelings and, and experiencing the impact before it actually happens is definitely going to motivate you to be committed to a life of transformation and expansion. Mm. You know? And is there, I'm sure that over these past years, you have read a lot of literature and you've done a lot of research and you've probably watched a load of videos that have supported the lifestyle or made you get deeper into this lifestyle. Um, yeah. Are there, is it easy to find information about living a holistic life? Is all the information um, good mm. information or is it, you know, is it like with most things you have to kind of use a filter? Yeah. I, I mean, I would say that on a general scale with, the internet and the accessibility of information, I think that if you want something, you can certainly get it. So if you want to live a life which is holistic, which is totally optimized physically, spiritually, and men mentally, emotionally, then you can certainly do it. Um, and so the short answer that, to that is yes, you can find it. Um, and it just takes, it takes, I think, a bit of time to really sit in your lane. You know what I mean? Because there are, there are people out there giving loads of opinions and a lot of these opinions are gra well grounded and well founded. However, they're still opinions um, based on the experiences of other people. And so it's, it's very important that you find your own pocket, you know, you find your own rhythm by utilizing the information that is out there um, and available. So that's what I've done. I've, I've listened to podcasts as, as you've, um, you know, stated or, or, you know, um, presumed, yes, I've read some books and I've, I've watched videos and stuff and I formulated my, my own conclusions by adding all of these things up, you know? So, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I have really enjoyed this discussion. Likewise, bro. Um, Likewise. It's made my brain think of new things that I can add to my holistic pie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think the main thing that I took away from you today is that it's not just one area. It's um, a combination of several areas that can influence your whole life and that essentially it's a process. So it's not something that happens overnight. It's a uh, slow transformation but a very worthwhile one. Oh, bro it's it's a beautiful journey you know and it's a beautiful life is beautiful and when we see that it's beautiful you know the the everything every every nuance of the journey is worthwhile you know and i'm sure many people will find it very very impactful and it may just be the thing that helps someone to make a change. Maybe someone's struggling right now on the verge of trying so many different things and maybe thinking maybe it's time to give up on life. And I hope that something that you've heard today has given you hope that actually here's an example of a life that has been transformed by making a decision. So thank you very much for joining me on the show today. You're welcome, bro. It's an absolute pleasure. Always, I always love talking to you, bro. This is the shortest conversation we've had as well. <laughs> you know, you know, so, um, bro, yeah, all, it's always a blessing. I'm always inspired by our conversations and I can't wait to do it again, bro. Some incredible food for thought and a lot of important things discussed. I do hope that you enjoyed this episode and take something away from it that can impact your life in a positive way. Please read the show description for more information on my guest and links to where you can see more of my works and subscribe if you want to hear more, no matter where you are in the world right now or what you have been through or what you are currently going through. I want you to know that this is not how your story ends. Thank you for listening and until next time, stay blessed and I wish you better days. Thank you.